Hey guys, what's going on? Brandon Fisher here with Fishy15.com. In this video, I'm going to be bringing you my full review of the new Amazon Kindle Fire from Amazon.com. So on the back here, as you can see, you've got an engraved Kindle logo. Below that, you got the Amazon logo. It's got a very nice matte finish too, so it's very nice to hold. You do get a lot of fingerprints, but not to worry about that. The front features a 7-inch display, and it weighs approximately 14.6 ounces. On the bottom here, we've got our audio jack input, our USB, so you can charge and sync your device, and the power button on the very far right. Something different from most tablets on the market, it's actually got the speakers on the top of the device, and as you can see, there are no volume rockers, no anything on the side of the device, so it's very plain and simple. One thing I really liked about the Kindle Fire was its simplicity and easy-to-use OS. So as you can see right here, you've got your recently used applications, and then on the bottom, you've got your favorites. So if you want to add something to the favorites, hold the icon and just add it to favorites. If you want to get rid of it, you can hold it, and you get the option to remove it from your favorites or remove it from the device itself. One thing I do not like is the unprofessionalism of the icons, but I'll get into that in just a second. On the top here, you can see mine says Brandon's Kindle. When you register your Kindle, you put in your first name, and it'll actually put whatever your first name is up in the carrier up there. You've got your settings and battery over here. You can click unlock and then it'll actually allow you to move your device and it'll actually put your device into portrait or landscape mode. And if you lock it, you can go ahead and tap on these settings again. If you lock it, it'll actually not allow you to turn it, um, you know. Uh, but anyways, right to the right of that, you've got your volume. Um, one thing I do not like, there is no volume buttons on the device itself. It's all within the OS. As you can see, there's no buttons, no anything. You have to do it all from the settings. Um, same with the brightness, you've got a controller right here on the settings. And to the right of that, we've got our Wi-Fi. You can go ahead and turn that on here. Just switch the little toggle, turn it on on. You click on your Wi-Fi, and it's very fast connecting, and it's very speedy. To the right of this, we've got our sync button. And this actually allows you to kind of sync your devices if you've got more than one Kindle, more than one uh, thing using your Amazon Prime account. You can sync them, and so you'll be able to go off one book and then continue it with another device. Here's actually your settings. You've got a ton of settings up here, and I'm not going to go through all these. It's just pretty much like every other device. Right here, you've got your notifications bar. Right in your top left of your device, you can go ahead and tap that, and that'll bring down your notifications. Here, I've got a notification that I need to update an application. You can just go ahead and hit install and download, and then in your notifications bar, it'll actually say download started, and voila. As you can see, we can go to the home again, and up top you still have got your one notification up there letting you know it's installing. On the right here, we've got our Wi-Fi symbol. On the top, we've got a search bar. We can search our whole Kindle Fire, so books, your movies, just anything. Right here, I've got just a few applications. We can go ahead and go to the newsstand. That's our first tab on the top left. I do not have any newspapers or anything, but I can show you how to get these real quick. Um, up top, again, it shows you your cloud, or it's actually on your device itself. You can go ahead and go to the store, and this is where I actually download all your newspapers, magazines, books, things like that. And actually right here we've got our magazines, newspapers, and the actual Kindle bookstore itself. On the top here we've got our featured magazines and newspapers and stuff like that. You can scroll through that. You can scroll up and down. You can look at different magazines and all that good stuff just by categories, um, the good stuff, all that stuff. So we can go ahead and click on one here. And this magazine is called News Seek. And up right here, you can actually subscribe to this magazine so you can get the new issues monthly when they come out, or you can just purchase this one issue or a previous one or anything like that. So on the bottom here, we've got some settings. We've got newspapers, magazines, the shopping cart, and you can actually view your Kindle Fire from here. And the main thing most people buy a Kindle for is the book. So now we can take a look at the bookstore, books, and all this good stuff. So here's a book I just recently downloaded. Um, I do not read, I just got the Kindle Fire, just so I can have another device, just to root it and all that good stuff. Right here's your settings, you can change the font size, the line spacing, the color of the background, the margins, all of this stuff. On the bottom here we've got some more settings, a bookmark, you can skip pages, you can go to the beginning, the cover, you can check the location, you can sync to the furthest page, and you can search the book, and that's pretty much it for the books. You can go ahead and go home now. Um, you can take a look at the bookstore for the Kindle. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, the Kindle Fire is probably the Kindle for you. But as you can see, this book does not give you any special deals, but a ton of books in the Kindle bookstore actually give you deals. So if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can actually get them for free. You don't have to pay for them, and it's just an awesome, awesome thing. 
As you can see, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get this book for free, and it's originally five bucks. And below this, you just got a description, so we can just go home now. And the next two tabs are the music and video tab for the Kindle Fire. I'm not going to get too much into this, but you can use your Amazon Prime account for that. The next tab is the apps. So you can see right on the top um, if apps are on your cloud or they're on your device itself. Um, this device, actually, like I said earlier, holds 8 gigabytes, so um, approximately 6 gigabytes of content, which is 80 applications, so that's quite a, quite a few number of applications that you can have on here. They're just like the app store for your iPhones or iPads. Um, you can uh, just find free applications, paid applications, you can install them just like that. And it's all hooked up to your Amazon account, so it just uses your credit card, and it's pretty cool like that. And the Amazon Kindle Fire actually is featuring a new web browser calling Amazon Silk. This is an ultra-fast web browsing, revolutionary cloud-accelerated browser. This uses split browser, architecture level, and just a ton of different things. And the Amazon Silk um, browser is just amazing. The speeds are just awesome, as you can see right here. Um, the, the browser features uh, Adobe Flash Player, so that's pretty cool. We can go ahead and take a look at that in just a second. Um, just a ton of cool features with this browser, and again, it's just super, super fast. On Amazon.com, if you actually go to the Kindle, the Kindle product, you can actually see why the browser is so fast. Um, and I'll give you some little tips here. It's got a shorter transit time. It's got computing power in the cloud, persistent connections, page indexes, machine learning, and just a ton of different features. And that is why the Kindle Fire's browser is so fast. One thing I do not like, well, I like it. It's just hard to get used to while using an iPad or an iPhone so much. The keyboard, it's kind of hard to get used to, but if you're just getting a Kindle, it'll be really easy. So now back to the home screen. This is probably the main thing about the Kindle Fire that I do not like. Just take a look at these icons. These three actually look pretty nice. And then you've got the Flickster. It's kind of square. And then you've got your books. They just Nothing goes together. and It just looks so unprofessional. And I just really hate it. I hope they'll fix that in future updates, but we'll have to wait and see. So the Kindle Fire sports a dual-core processor, which makes it fun and easy for playing Angry Birds, um, Fruit Ninja, just a ton of games. This isn't going to be one of your hardcore gaming devices, but, you know, if you got kids or you got nephews or something that love playing games, the Kindle Fire is going to be really easy, and there's nothing wrong with playing Angry Birds or anything, as it's got a dual-core processor. And here I'm just going to be doing a little gameplay of Angry Birds for you guys. As you can see, I've been playing it quite a bit. It's pretty addicting. I've never really gotten into it until I got my Kindle Fire. Just been playing it just a ton, trying to get three stars on all the level and stuff like that. And just to get out of an app, you can just go ahead and hit the little arrow button and then the home button. And that's about it. And I'll show you guys a little gameplay of Fruit Ninja on the Kindle Fire. I found this to be a, a kind of a tough game to play on here, as when your swipes, they're kind of laggy, as you can see right there. It kind of takes a few, like a split second just to actually get the swipe across, but... So that makes it kind of tough. Um, and it actually kind of looks uh, stretched a little bit, kind of fat. As a Kindle Fire, it's not a square device. It's kind of a more of a stretched out rectangle. But other than that, it's really fun to play still. Uh, those are my only complaints are the, the touch sensitivity. It's kind of just, just kind of slow. But anyways, the Kindle Fire is just an awesome tablet. I would definitely recommend it for anybody looking for a tablet that doesn't want to spend the 500 bucks for an iPad. Uh, this is an awesome tablet. It's well worth the 200 bucks, and I would definitely recommend it. Hit the thumbs up button below, subscribe up there, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.